maybe I have to do this. If we're wrong, guess what? We don't have to be approved by our heart. We don't have to be approved by ourselves. And a lot of the times pastors, specifically religious pastors, they think, well, you have to sit in the church for a year before you can be ordained to be a deacon. You have to sit in the church for a year before you can be ordained to be a preacher. You have to be in here for six months before you can preach your first message. No. When God called me, he called me. He didn't call me to say, okay, Johnny, you have to sit in the church and wait here for six months before you preach. No. When I was called, literally five or six days later, I was up preaching. Why? Because it's not time to sit back. There was a man that laid at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years and Jesus came and said to him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. We watched, me and my parents and I think my uncle was here too, we watched this episode and it's called the right op and I'm pretty sure in the episode it's called the right opportunity and Jesus comes and says to this man at the pool of Bethesda rise take up thy bed and walk rise take up your mat and walk and but man he didn't sit there and just stare at him and it's like right now no he jumped up he ran around and then the Pharisees are like bro what are you doing it's the Sabbath day and then Jesus like skirts out of there and is like I'm getting out of here I'm done that man he didn't wait he didn't sit there and wait for Jesus's approval because he knew in that moment when God ordained him to get up and walk y'all need to listen to this God ordained him to get up and walk right Rise, take up your bed and walk. When it says rise, Jesus didn't say rise in six months, rise in a year, rise in three months. No, he said rise right now. And the man didn't look at him and was like, the man didn't look at him and was like, right now. He got up, he walked, and he danced. You think that man at the at the gate of beautiful in Acts chapter 3 when he was resurrected in Peter's shadow? Literally, Peter, Peter shattered. Peter's shadow passed over him, and John and Peter took him by the hand. He got up, and he danced in the presence of the Lord. When David took the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament into the city of David, David, he didn't wait around, but he got up, and he walked. This man, he got up, and he walked. He was there for 38 years. Some people, they sat in the church. For 38 years but yet they do nothing to improve their relationship with Jesus Christ and a lot of the times we sit and we're like I have to wait for the pastor to get me up I have to wait till I get an ordained minister's license I have to wait to do this or wait to do that stop waiting God called you and immediately after Jeremiah in the scripture is anointed all of a sudden, he gets this vision of an almond rod and a boiling pot. And then Jeremiah sends the word forth and prophesies. And listen at what Jeremiah says in verse 6 to the Lord. And I said, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto him, Say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go all that I shall send thee. And whosoever I shall command thee, thou shalt speak. So Jeremiah, in his carnal mind he thought I have to wait before I'm an adult before I can preach the word before I can prophesy before I can evangelize but the Lord says no I sanctify thee now I know thee now I ordain thee now do not say that you cannot speak because you were a child but say not that I'm a child I I am a child I'm a child of God I'm 17 so technically and legally I'm not an adult yet so Technically, I'm not an adult yet. Is that going to keep me from preaching the word of God? Absolutely not. Because Jeremiah, in his carnal mind, he thought, I cannot preach and I cannot prophesy right now because I'm a child. But the word comes and convicts him and says, do not, do not say that you are a child for thou shalt go to all I shall send thee and I command thee thou shalt speak and be not afraid of their faces for I am with thee to deliver thee saith the Lord then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said unto me behold I put my words in thy mouth so in that moment that the Lord revealed Jeremiah's calling Jeremiah thought 
I cannot speak for I'm a child. I can't prophesy because I'm only a child. Nobody's going to listen to me. But I'm here to tell you today. God has chosen you. It doesn't matter if you're two, if you're 102. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, Hispanic, African American, if you're Hawaiian. It doesn't matter what you are. God has chosen you. He has called you. And no devil in hell. Jesus literally said to Peter, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So people they're going to try and come against you. Rejoice in it because the pastor may come to you and you can go to him and tell him God called me to preach and he can say well you have to sit in the church and be called for six months before you can actually preach. No, you're going to stand up to him and you're going to say, no, God didn't call me for me just to sit here, but he called me for me to get up and preach the word. Because if I'm sitting in my pew at church and God says, you need to tell this to something, you won't be to sit there for six months before I preach the word? Absolutely not. Because I am not, I am absolutely not called by a pastor. Because I've said this before, I've said this twice twice and two different messages before when I went down in southern Kentucky I literally said this in the pulpit and I said it the Sunday before that at my home church and I said they didn't hire me so they sure can't fire me if so if I'm hired at Dairy Queen. McDonald's ain't going to be the one to fire me, okay? If anybody's going to fire me, it's going to be him. But I will not be fired because I am a child of God. I am going to obey his word. So carnally, Jeremiah thought, I can't preach right now. I can't prophesy right now because I'm too young for that. I'm just a child. And Jesus is like, uh-uh, you're not sitting back. I've called you and I've chosen you. So go and prophesy. And immediately, Jeremiah is taken into this vision of an almond rod and a boiling pot. And he goes forth to prophesy. Next, I want to talk about when you were called, when you were chosen, and somebody sees your anointing. People are going to try and steal it for you. People are going to try and use you. Oh, well, you're a good singer. Let's use her for her anointing. Oh, he's a good guitar player. So let's use him for his anointing. Uh-uh. Absolutely not. Use your talents. Absolutely. Use your gifts. Absolutely. But you also need to learn to guard it because people are going to try and come against it. So we see in Jeremiah chapter 20, this man, which is... um the son of a priest and he's the chief governor of the house of the lord so he imprisons jeremiah okay he imprisons jeremiah and um because jeremiah he spoke the word of the lord guess what happened because pasher p-a-s-h-u-r he was religious. He was a religious chief governor of the house of the Lord. So Pasher, he imprisons Jeremiah because the word of the Lord came into Jeremiah. Jeremiah po um, prophesied some things and Pasher didn't like it. So Jeremiah stuck in prison. And then we see on down in verse 7. Oh Lord, so this is Jeremiah praying to the Lord. Oh Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou wert stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily, and everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made reproach unto me in derision daily. Then said I, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Okay, so the devil we see here. That the enemy was fighting Jeremiah pretty darn hard. So, um, he's arrested, he's put in prison, and I think it says... It says in verse 10, Pasher smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. 
So this religious man, he didn't like what Jeremiah was prophesying, okay? And he's thrown in prison. Jeremiah's thrown in prison into the high gate of Benjamin. And he and Jeremiah is smote it because this religious folk didn't like what Jeremiah was speaking. And then Jeremiah cries to the Lord, Lord, thou deceived me. You're stronger than I, and you prevailed against me. Um I'm always in derision. People always mock me. You always make me prophesy violence and spoil because the, the word of the Lord may reproach unto me and derision daily. So he begins to blame God. Lord, why would you have me to say this? Why would you have me to speak the truth like this? Like Jeremiah, when he prophesied, you read the whole book of Jeremiah, he prophesied that Jerusalem will be captured by the Babylonians. Um... He sends a warning to the wicked king. He sends warnings to false prophets. Um, he talks about good and bad figs. Um, he talks about the judgment of Judah and the nations. He foretells the 70 years of captivity. That's not fun stuff that you would want to hear back in that time. So then the word of the Lord comes. So he's praying. And then the word of the Lord comes and says this. So when you are called, when you are chosen, you are ordained. The religious people of the church, they're going to try and come against you. And the enemy fights us so hard to put us in a prison because we are in one. The reason in the earthly world, in the physical world, um, we put people in a... Um, we put people in prison. We put people in jail because they're a threat. Listen, because they're a threat to everybody else they're a threat to society the enemy wants to place us in a prison because we are a threat to his society also known as hell somebody needs to get what i'm saying listen 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 we put people earthly we put people in jail because they're a threat to society the devil wants to put, put us he wants to put us in prison because we are a threat to his kingdom. We are a threat to his society. I wish somebody right now would lift up a shout unto the Lord. Because somebody needs to understand that they're a threat to the enemy. The reason the enemy is threatening you so hard is putting you into a deep, dark prison. The reason that Peter was put into captivity is because he was preaching the word. Jeremiah was put in prison because he was prophesied. Paul and Silas were put in prison because that they prophesied. Because they were apostles because they spread the word of God so the enemy tries to put the anointing in a prison but two years two years and a month and four months or something I was put into a prison for two years and four months and right after that I was delivered from fear a month after that I found out that I was called to preach why did the enemy have that in a prison for two years he knew I had the anointing to preach he knew I had the anointing to preach. So we decided, okay, I'm going to take her anointing. I'm going to make her afraid to speak in church. So I'm going to close in her anointing. So then when I got delivered, that broke off. And that immediately led into my calling. Jeremiah, he was scared because he was only a child. Moses, he was scared because he couldn't speak very well. Apostle Paul was scared because he persecuted this church. We all have our own issues. We all have our own problems. We're all scared of our anointing at one point or another. And being called, it's scary. Trust me, I know. I get it. I understand. So the enemy, he wants to put us in this prison. But so Jeremiah's in this prison. He's praying to the Lord and he's like complaining. And, and the enemy puts us so deep into a prison that all we can do, it says in the book of Ephesians 6, when you've done all that you can do to stand, stand. If you've done all you can do to stand, stand stand on what stand on the word of god stand in prayer stand in worship stand in surrender stand in the full armor of god god didn't call you to be a little baby 
but can't fight for itself. He called you to be the man or the woman of God that you are to go and fight this battle for him. Apostle Paul, he was laying on his deathbed and he was still writing these letters to Timothy and to the church of Corinth and all of these different places and all of these different people. And he says, I have fought the good fight of faith. He literally fought with everything in him. And if all you can do is stand, stand, having your loins girt with the bat of truth, having your feet saw with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith. God has called you. God has ordained you. He didn't call your brother or your sister. He didn't call your mom or your dad to do your job. Like, yes, your family may be called. Your brothers and sisters, your friends may be called. But they don't have the exact same calling as you. God, why would you choose me instead of my friend? No, he chose you. God, why would you choose me instead of my brother? No, he ordained you. You don't need your pastor's approval. You don't need. And I'm not saying you need to go to church and show up reckless and da 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 No, I'm not saying that, okay? You don't need your pastor's approval. You don't need your parents' approval. You don't need your friend's approval. You need his so he called you he ordained you he didn't call your children he didn't call your parents he didn't call anybody he chose you why because he saw he bought you over two thousand years ago when jesus stretched forth his arms and he said it is finished what was finished you the price it was finished he said it is finished. The dead has been paid in full for their sin. I paid for their anointing. I paid for their healing. I paid for their deliverance. I paid for their sin. It's finished. It's done. He chose you. He chose David. Not his brothers. He chose Jeremiah. Not anybody else. He chose Moses and Aaron and Nehemiah and Esther and Solomon and he chose you. He chose you, Loretta. He chose you, Mom. He chose you, Dad. He chose you. Everybody who's watching, He chose you. He didn't choose anybody else, but He chose you. Why? Because He saw, this is a daughter. This is my son. That is after my own heart. I want you. And I've said this multiple times before. While he was on the cross, I was on his mind. He saw me over 2,000 years ago when I wasn't born yet. He saw you over 2,000 years ago when you weren't even born yet. Why? Because he says, I love my child this much. But going back, he puts us in this prison. The enemy wants to put us in this prison. And he's like, ha, 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 I got the anointing. But then you read the scripture and you get breakthrough. You pray and you get breakthrough. And then the Bible says in Matthew, I've gained, I've given thee the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth, you shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, it shall be loosed in heaven. If you drink any deadly poison, it should not harm you. Like if you do, if you do this, it's not going to harm you. Why? Because you have, mm, you have the key. You have the power. You have the authority. A lot of people say, well, only the pastor can pray for me. Or only the preacher can cast out demons. Only this person can heal the sick. No, the Bible says you have the power to trade upon every serpent and every scorpion and all power of the enemy. A religious person would say, well, not anybody can just cast out demons. Not anybody can just raise the dead. Not anybody can just heal the sick. Not anybody can just do this or do that. No, if you are a child of God and he's giving you the key, I wish I had a set of keys right now. If I did. So, I live in my parents' house. My mom, my dad, me, my two cats, and my dog. When well, my dog's not in the house. But when I go and I want chicken nuggets out of the freezer, I don't take them out of the freezer and say, Hey, mom, can I have chicken nuggets? No. Literally, I live in the house. 
I don't need their permission. If I want to get some chicken nuggets out of the freezer, put them in the oven and eat them. And then say, can I have the ketchup for this? Can I have the barbecue sauce for this? I don't need that. Why? Because... Why? Because I dwell in their house. If you're in the house of the Lord, you don't have to ask, Lord, can I ha do have this? Lord, can I do this? Lord, can I do that? You were in the Father's house. I don't have to go to Him every time I want to take something out of the refrigerator. We're out of the freezer or whatever. I'm in the Father's house. He's given me the key. I'm in the Father's house, and I have the keys to the kingdom. The kingdom is the Father's house. So when he gave me, so when I got saved, he said, Here, my daughter, here's the key. Here, my son, here's the key. And I don't need to, like, ask him, Hey, Father, can I do this or can I do that? Da, 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 da. And you need to make sure that you are called to do this or to do that. But certain things, you shouldn't have to ask him. I can heal the sick and raise the dead without asking him. Because I have the key. I have the access into my father's house. Not my earthly father, but my heavenly father. I don't have to be ordained by my earthly father. I don't have to be ordained by my mother. I don't have to be ordained by the pastor. I'm ordained. I'm called. I'm chosen by him. So you have the power to do these things. And then the Bible says that I have the key to the kingdom. That whatever I bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. So what do I do? When I'm in prison, what can I do? I take the key. I unlock the door. And guess what? I'm set free out of prison. The two years that I was in prison for my life, it was an absolute waste of time. Because I already had the power. I already had the key. I already had the authority to do it. I just didn't know how to use a key. If you hand a little child, a little two-year-old child with a key, more than likely they're gonna like stick it in their mouth and try to eat it. They're not gonna like they're not gonna know to go and unlock the door. They're not gonna know to go to the car and start it. They're probably as a two-year-old toddler, they're gonna to take it and they're gonna try and chew on it and stick it in their mouth. Why? Because that's what two-year-olds do. When you were a babe in Christ, you don't understand that you have power. You don't understand that you have the authority. So if I have a kid and I hand it a key, it doesn't understand that it has the power to open the door. It's not going to understand that it has the power to start the car. It's not going to understand that. Why? Because it's a babe. It's a babe. Just as we are babe in Christ, when we first come to Christ, you don't understand that you have the power to do these things. Like some people might, because they've been raised in church forever. But if you don't have the wisdom to use the key, then you're not going to use it. Those two years I was in bondage, because I was younger in Christ and I grew up in church my whole life, I didn't have the knowledge and I didn't understand that I had the wisdom. Oh, I can heal the sick. Oh, I can raise the dead. Oh, I can preach the gospel. Oh, I can cast out demons. Like what? I didn't understand, but you have the key, the prison that the enemy has put you in. You no longer have to face that. You no longer have to be in that place of bondage. And then it says in verse 9, and he said, I will not make, Jeremiah said, then I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay I'm going to repeat that for y'all who were sitting in the back and weren't paying attention but his word okay so Jeremiah's like okay Lord I'm not going to make mention of you I'm not going to speak your name anymore but I love a good but in the word of God and I'm being so serious. It's like, so there's this one scripture. The Lord Jesus, he cast out this demon and he fell as though he were dead. So much so that people said he was dead. Then guess what the scripture, guess what the next verse goes on to say. So it says, 
so much so that people said he was dead so it says he was dead the next verse which i think is verse 27 i can't remember where it is it says but jesus he was dead but jesus i'm gonna say that again he was dead but jesus he was dead but jesus so jeremiah says i'm not going to speak of your word anymore i'm not going to speak your name anymore i'm not going to make mention of you anymore but his word but his word lord i'm not going to prophesy anymore but his word lord i'm not going to preach anymore but his word i'm not going to heal the sick anymore but his word i'm not going to raise the dead anymore but his word I'm not going to use the keys to the kingdom anymore, but his word. I'm not going to do this for you anymore, but his word. A lot of the times we get mad, we get discouraged. God, I'm not going to heal anymore. But his word says, heal the sick. 